Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is the bearable bull here. And I got this aggressively average content for you today. As oh baby, the crypto market has awakened. The bulls have fully returned to take charge. And Bitcoin has passed the legendary mark of $40,000, closing in on $40,500 with XRP at $0.63. Cents. Guys, you need to understand right now that these are the initial moments before the next year bull market that will come sooner than you think and will end faster than you know it. Let me make sure all of you realize exactly where we are. Here, Moon Lambo stated a couple hours ago that an analyst has predicted a $1.88 XRP is on the horizon. And over the next couple days, I'll be having Waters Above return to my channel with another accurate prediction of where XRP is going to go. And if you guys didn't know already, he's perma bullish on XRP right now. And there's yet another analyst that believes that XRP will hit a dollar by the end of year. I do believe this $1 XRP is on the horizon. And I believe these will be the lowest values we'll be able to see for XRP ever again. Now that is not financial advice and I am not a financial advisor. But you should still follow it anyway. And for those of you that didn't know, I have just posted my final bull run warning for the crypto market in 2024 as the entry points that I have been saying for the past couple months are almost completely gone. First and foremost in this video I posted, I review some cryptos were already up over 100% on already. And those cryptos are likely about to never be able to be bought again as far as entry levels are concerned. Guys, get it while it's hot. There are at least four cryptos in this video that you can still buy that'll make generational wealth this next cycle. And I can't stress this enough. You're welcome in advance. And you could find this at OnlyFans.com slash The Bearable Bull. Now, guys, what I really want to show you for today is Madame Lagarde, yet again, spilling the beans on what the future holds. And guys, let me tell you this right now. Madame Lagarde, also known as Christine Lagarde, may very well be the most powerful woman in finance. She may very well be one of the most powerful central bankers on the planet. She was formerly the head of the IMF. And at her time there, she met up with Ripple and Brad Garlinghouse numerous times to do what I believe is to implement XRP behind the scenes into the new financial system for a specific moment in time. And I think that moment in time is fast approaching. But here, here she mentions Ripple explicitly. She mentions Ripple as a big actor, a good actor. And every single other time she's mentioned Bitcoin, she hasn't liked it. Guys, she is one of the people that control the future of where the world is going. And I can guarantee you, if she's over here endorsing XRP, you better believe Ripple and XRP have already won.
Well, 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 would you look at that? Madame Lagarde, naming circle and ripple in the same breath. You can often tell what the winners of the crypto space are going to be based on what the elites tell you. All you need to do is pay attention, be objective, don't be tribal, don't be self-righteous, and take it upon yourself to learn. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the most humbling space on the planet. Not only is it humbling to go through 99% crashes in bear markets, it's also humbling to see 10,000% gains during bull markets. Kevin Cage stated, Bitcoin has officially reached the R1 before the halving, just as it has done before in the previous three cycles and halvings. But the question remains, are we heading to all-time highs like in 2016? Or are we heading to another low like in 2019-2020 to delay the fun? A single narrative, whether good or bad, can change everything quickly. But I personally believe we are in the bullish direction. While I do believe most people are beginning to get greedy, I do think we still have runway left. The rest of 2024, I think, is going to be very special. It is going to be a bumpy ride, and we're not going to see a straight line forward. But if you guys have paid attention to Rosie Rios at all, you'll know that this is an intergenerational wealth transfer. She's the 43rd treasurer of the United States, and she's on the board of Ripple. The train has left the station. And you're either going to be on it, or you're going to get left behind. Ladies and gentlemen, we're heading to a dollar for XRP by the end of the year. And at some point in 2024, the year of XRP's 12th birthday, you better believe I think XRP's going to hit brand new all-time highs. I'm going to leave you guys with Rosie Rios to cap off this video for today. And I hope if any one of you get one thing out of it, it's this. We are about to win. Don't fuck this up. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the bearable bull here. Thanks for tuning in. As always, I appreciate every single one of you. Now I'll be back tomorrow with another video. Just that. Rosie, welcome. Thank you. So Rosie, when you think about the intergenerational wealth transfer that's going to go on, what do you think about? Yeah. Well, first of all, thanks for having me. And if you're only thinking about it now, you're behind the eight ball. Mm -hmm. The train has left the station. I mm -hmm. keep saying that, and it's absolutely true, especially when it comes to this topic. So what people need to realize about intergenerational wealth is it's already happening, right? So we're talking about kind of, so, so the boomers, which is my generation, mm -hmm. you know, we, we have the most discretionary income. But this next generation, basically, you know, the millennials, although it, it, it's pretty much anyone born in the mid 90s and okay. later, uh, you know, are, are going to inherit this this opportunity to really think about investments in a totally different way. So when you think about those generations, so technically, you know, the millennials or anyone born between 1980 and 1996. Mm -hmm. But again, look, my son's 26, my daughter's 21. I call them the Robin Hood investor, right? Mm -hmm. But in reality, you know, these are kids who grew up with the internet, right? So anyone who's grown up with the internet, they see the world as very flat. It's no longer what they're taught at home, what they're taught in the classroom. It's what they see. It's what they've learned. The good, the bad, and the ugly of the internet. They're very tech savvy. They're very confident. But they don't have the experience that perhaps a lot of wealth managers, financial analysts, managers, etc., need to really understand how to think about their investments. So for me, you know, it was very important that I get into their heads. My daughter's 21, my son is 26. When I left the Obama administration in 2016, after serving both terms, I studied these kids, I call them kids, for two years at Harvard. And I really wanted to understand kind of the social, political, economic way that they think and how they behave. And for them, you know, it's kind of this one and done world, right? It's, it's set it and forget it. Right. Technology means everything to them. They're very, very confident, they're very progressive, and they're very savvy. 
But again, they lack a lot of the world experience that my generation still has. So even here now in this economic downturn, this unprecedented economic downturn, this is where, in my opinion, the wealth management industry has a huge opportunity. It's no longer about taking them out to golf and buying them dinner. It's really kind of thinking about how to use technology and information in a totally different way. So if you're not already on their app, on their phone, and that's how they access information, if you're not already there, you know, you're behind. You're behind. So for people to really think about how to use technology, how to kind of think about kind of out of the box approaches to investments, and really it's not just about it's not just about assessing value, it's creating value. And again, really being able to understand how these kind of exotic investments work, whether it is crypto, whether it is thinking about getting into, whether it's the metaverse, et cetera, these pre-IPO opportunities, and the time is now. The absolute time is now.